1760, the wonder man of Europe runs for his life. No records exist of his birth, death, or true identity. He was considered a genius in art, music, politics, and alchemy. Although he looked 40, many believed he was at least 150 years old. He called himself the Count of Saint Germain. Others called him the man who would not die. There are people in contemporary America who believe that Saint Germain is very much with us. Although he was most prominent 200 years ago, they believe he has never died and never will. This series presents information based in part on theory and conjecture. The producer's purpose is to suggest some possible explanation, but not necessarily the only ones, to the mysteries we will examine. The court at Versailles in 1757 rides the last great crest of regal splendor before the French Revolution. Embroiled in a bitter war with England, King Louis XV still plays host to the leading thinkers and doers of Europe. The Count of Saint Germain is welcomed as a man of wealth and obvious breeding. A brilliant violinist, he conducts entire symphonies without referring to written music. He is also a talented painter, and his descriptions of ancient history cause listeners to believe that he experienced the events himself. In recreations based on actual memoirs, Saint Germain fascinates the elite of France, including Voltaire, Madame Pompadour, and especially King Louis. I liked and admired the man. In his way, he was brilliant. A scientist and a historian. He amused and astounded me. Why, once he removed a large flaw from this very beautiful diamond and uh, tripled its worth. <laughs> I set him up in a laboratory at the Triana. He used to teach me chemistry. He even said I had a natural aptitude for it. During years spent in India, Saint Germain supposedly learned how to remove flaws from diamonds and change base metals to gold. It was written that he performed both feats often enough to dissuade doubters. Skilled as a chemist, it was also rumored that he possessed a magic elixir of life. Saint Germain neither confirmed nor denied anything said about him. How old was he? 100? 200? 2,000 years? He either smiled or responded with cheerful evasiveness. He spoke at least a dozen languages so fluently that in any country he visited, he was accepted as a native. But where was he actually from? Portugal? Egypt? Atlantis? The fog-shrouded Carpathian Mountains of Transylvania have hidden many legendary figures. One might have been Saint Germain as a small boy. When Prince Franz Rakoczy lost control of Hungary, his two older sons were placed under house arrest in Vienna. His third son, possibly Saint Germain, traveled secretly from Transylvania to Florence and the protection of the House of Medici. If this story, one of so many, is true, it would explain Saint Germain's extraordinary education and appreciation of fine art. According to memoirs, the Count was slim, well-proportioned, and of medium height. His features were pleasant, and his eyes possessed a great fascination. Those who looked into them were profoundly influenced. His sense of humor and courtly manner made him especially attractive to women. Among them, King Louis's mistress, Madame Pompadour. He was a truly delightful person, and he knew all of the European languages and he was very entertaining. The king, you know, is easily bored, but never by Saint-Germain. 
And yet there was a mystery to him. Nobody knew where he came from or his true identity. And there was a strangeness. Some of my very elderly friends at court said they had known him for 50 years, and yet he never seemed to age. If he had a magic elixir of life, <laughs> I wish he had given some to me. Casanova, the Italian opportunist, resented his rival's success. Saint-Germain is a charlatan and an imposter. He thinks he's a prodigy in everything. Oh, he's very clever. And with his tricks, he has the capability to amuse. He can make the women admire him. But then, I know something of the ladies myself. One very mysterious thing. In all of the banquets we have attended together, I have never seen him eat one morsel of food. While his peers gorged at banquets, Saint Germain dined alone on light portions of cereal, vegetables, and the white meat of chicken. Was this his secret for long life? Small, balanced meals? Voltaire, France's aging intellectual, expressed great admiration for Saint Germain. He is a very learned man in the Freemason. His knowledge of history is so extraordinary, makes one believe he lived through the events himself. One could believe it would take more than one lifetime to absorb so much knowledge. Thus, the man must be immortal. He was so knowledgeable in politics and history that I used to send him on secret missions to make peace with England, but uh, that was my mistake. I went over the head of my foreign minister, who naturally was furious. Of course, I had to pretend that I knew nothing of the affair. Choisel was going to arrest him, but he escaped and disappeared. Envious of Saint Germain's influence on the king, Choisel, Louis' foreign minister, ordered him arrested and shot as an English spy. Choisel circulated vicious rumors throughout Europe claiming that Saint Germain was a Portuguese of questionable parentage who married for money in Mexico and absconded to Turkey with his wife's jewels. Saint Germain escaped to the English Channel and crossed safely to London. However, Choisel's ugly stories followed him wherever he wandered, even to Russia. In Saint Petersburg, Saint Germain joined a conspiracy to overthrow Tsar Peter in 1762. Battlefield strategies brought victory to the forces of Catherine the Great. Once enthroned, the new queen rewarded him with the title General Well Done. The legend of the brilliant count preceded him to the distinguished courts and drawing rooms of Europe. Wherever he traveled, Saint Germain was welcomed as a scholar, a scientist, and raconteur. Most of his activities were shrouded in mystery, but it is known that he formed secret societies dealing with the occult and warned the crowned heads of many nations that the collapse of the French monarchy would eventually doom them as well. His one known manuscript, the Most Holy Trinisophia, written in a combination of modern languages and ancient hieroglyphics, is considered a classic of occult literature. <laughs> 